Good afternoon. I'm Christopher Mayoni from Costello Mayoni Shuck. We are a leading audiovisual consulting firm in the United States. And with me is Dave Berlin. He's from Video Corporation of America, a leading systems integrator in the Northeast. Dave, hot topic these days. Open architecture. What do you think? What's it about and how does it affect our industry? Well, I think it's important to define open architecture. And I would, I would define, it, define it as an architecture um, whose information is public, is made, made public by the manufacturer or, or the software or the operating system is made public so many people could write to it and many people could develop around it. Um, and I think it's really important to distinguish um, that when you're doing, when you're talking about open architecture, that we are talking about standards-based well, th there's all sorts of buzzwords. We have open architecture, closed architecture. We have proprietary and non-proprietary. Um, we have compatibility and standards-based. How do each of these come into play as it applies to systems integration and ultimately what we turn over to our clients? Now, that, that's a good question. Um, clearly, there, if something's non-standards-based, there could be no compatibility between manufacturers. So it, it's very important that when we, when, we, when we look at what we're going to recommend to our clients and what we're going to, um, that everything works together, especially since many of us deal with large institutional clients with uh, locations around the globe, uh, that it's very important that Hong Kong and London and, and New York and L.A. and San Francisco all be able to speak to one another. And if we were dealing in non-standards-based system, there, there's that, that fear that one group wouldn't be able to talk to the other group or to, a, to another company. Right. Well, I mean, we even have broadcast standards now which are not still compatible between NTSC and PAL and, and CCAN. Um, but in, in our AV industry, you know, I, I look back at the, at the IT world, and you know, we had uh, Microsoft and IBM and Apple, and, and now we have Linux, which is a completely open architecture, as opposed to the very proprietary nature that sometimes we find with Apple and, and the somewhat closed posture that Microsoft takes with their software systems. But more importantly, as it applies to our industry, we've got firms like uh, the Kodak manufacturers, Cisco, Polycom, Tanberg. Um, we have the, the, the big three in the AV, Crestron, Extron, AMX. Um, we have companies like that who are bordering on standards-based versus compatibility versus proprietary. And, you know, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not so good. You know, I, I think there, everybody's trying to um, gauge that balance between something that really works and that's very reliable and, and that they could control the, the, the entire environment and the entire user experience and something that, that they open up. They, you know, in um, Japan, the opening of the kimono where they show everything that they have and, and allow everybody to develop towards it. Um, and uh, looking, looking at Cisco specifically, you know, you, you, could, you could fault Cisco for, for not making everything available to, to everyone. And, and how does a Cisco room, even though currently they're, they're telling, telling us that they're going to have um, standards-based um, equipment, so the Cisco telepresence systems could talk to Polycom and talk to Tamberg, but, but currently they don't, and they seem a little resistant on the surface Yeah, I mean, to that's certainly it. making it more difficult for us as uh, engineers and, and designers uh, having to work around proprietary uh, systems, and I'm not sure that it's in the best interest of the client all the time. Now, you know, when video conferencing uh, came about, there had to be the need to establish standards, and, and for the most part, we do have video conference standards for communication so that uh, Polycom can talk to a life size, can talk to a Tanberg, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but when you get down to the nitty gritty of the boxes, we're still seeing proprietary communications and proprietary buses and a very closed architecture on the hardware side, not making it easy for us as designers and consultants mm -hmm. or you as integrators to ultimately make this equipment play together. Yeah, yeah uh, clearly. And the manufacturers might tell you it's because of the reliability factor. Um, I refer to it when we're de developing systems as the princess telephone theory where, you know, we all remember when we were kids and you picked up the phone and even if the power was at, you dialed the number and, and you got to the other side. And, and I'm sure that's some of Cisco's logic and Tamberg's logic and, and, and 
you know, any proprietary manufacturers that they, they want to protect that reliability quotient. Um, however, in, in, in today's world and in a global economy, um, I'm not really sure if, if those uh, if that benefit outweighs um, at, at weighs the, the risk. Sure, sure. Those are all good points. Um, we have to take a break right now, and we'll be back very shortly. Stewart Film Screen announces contemporary cabaret screens for multimedia installations. With features that are installer friendly, including choice of motors and easy setup adjustments from the screen's housing front. Stewart Film Screen is also introducing Ambient Shade, a window treatment product that controls sunlight in commercial and residential applications. Since 1977, Full Compass has been a national leader in the sales and rental of pro audio, video, AV, and lighting equipment. With over 600 top brands and $10 million in inventory, Full Compass is one-stop shopping. 